Hello and welcome to part three of the bonding series. Today I will try and answer the following question. How are ionic bonds formed? As we saw in part one, an ionic bond is formed between a metal, which are highlighted here in the periodic table, and a non-metal, which are highlighted in red in the periodic table here. For example, sodium, which is a really reactive alkali metal, found here in the periodic table, reacts with chlorine, which is a highly toxic reactive halogen, found here in the periodic table, to make table salt. How does this happen? Well, through electron transfer, I'll explain. Firstly, metals lose electrons to get a stable full outer shell when they react with non-metals. Sodium, over here, has one electron in its outer shell, and what it needs to do to get a full outer shell, a stable full outer shell, is lose this outer shell electron. Okay, it loses it, and then what you can see here is a stable full outer shell. Non-metals, on the other hand, they gain electrons to get a full outer shell. And chlorine, for example, here, needs to gain one electron. So sodium reacts with chlorine by giving it its outer shell electron. And what happens now is sodium and chlorine, which is now chloride, both form ions. And you represent ions with square brackets. So sodium has a plus one charge. I'll try and make the pen a bit thinner. Apologies about. And chloride has a minus one charge. There we are. And it's written as NaCl. Right. Let's do another example that's a bit trickier. Magnesium chloride here. So what happens, zoom in, what happens when magnesium reacts with chlorine? As we said previously, chlorine needs one electron to have a full outer shell. So magnesium gives chlorine one of its electrons. Okay, and happy days, chlorine now has formed a stable chloride ion. Like that. Now, magnesium has one electron left, so what does it do with that second electron? What happens is we get another chlorine ion. Oops, sorry, let's move these out of the way. We get another chlorine atom. And that's ready to accept magnesium's second electron. And now all atoms involved have a stable full outer shell. And the magnesium has a two plus ion. Let's go and make that thinner. Apologies. So the magnesium has a two plus ion, and we have now two chloride ions with a one minus ion. And magnesium chloride can be written as MgCl2. Right. Let's do some exercises to see how much you've understood. So, can you show how ionic bonds are formed between atoms of A, magnesium and oxygen, B, sodium and oxygen? 
for this only can you show you only need to show the outer shell electrons okay so pause the video think about it write your answer down if you can and check back okay so how did you do let's have a look Firstly to A, oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell, so oxygen needs two electrons. So what happens is, let's zoom in a bit, magnesium gives both its electrons to oxygen, and what we have is an oxide ion, magnesium oxide ion. Have you noticed how I've represented magnesium's electrons with crosses? and oxygen's electrons with dots. And that's what some people do when they answer the exam, though this is not necessary. Okay, so as we can see, magnesium, because it's lost its two outer shell electrons, you don't need to draw anything here in the square brackets, magnesium two plus, oxygen two minus. And uh, to answer the exam question, you say, Two electrons, uh, probably mark there, are transferred and marked there from magnesium atom to an oxygen atom. And maybe mention the fact that ions are formed. Two, three marker. There we are. Okay, so what about uh, B, sodium and oxygen? Now, sodium and oxygen, it's a bit trickier because oxygen needs two electrons to get a full out shell. And sodium only can give one. So similar to magnesium chloride what happens here is you get one sodium atom giving one electron and another sodium atom giving another electron and what you have are two sodium ions like this and one oxide ion and again as if you want to get marks in the exam you say one electron is transferred from each of two sodium atoms to give to one oxygen atom to make two sodium ions and maybe a mention of ions and one oxide ions you effectively need to talk about the transfer of electrons and i've represented that with arrows right that is all for me for today if you have any questions please write in the comments section below also like and subscribe I will catch you all again very soon for yet another video. Bye for now.